First thing that we're going to do is we're going to ignore pretty much all of this text effect right now. We're just going to focus on making the website. Now, if you've never done HTML or CSS before, we've done a little bit earlier in this course, but this is a fairly straightforward website. We've got a H1 and a H2 for each section. We're going to have three section tags, each with a H1 and a H2 for the heading and the kind of subheading in here. And then we've got a background on this, which is black with the background image on here that kind of wipes as we scroll up the page. And we'll talk about how we add that in a second. And then later on, what we'll do is we'll add the web typography in here too. So the first thing we're going to do is make a brand new project from scratch. So I'm going to make a brand new project and I'm going to call this one Brutal Lust. Brutal Lust. Here we go. Now, again, you can call this whatever you like. It's completely up to you. Now, in this one, we do want to do things in HTML. And the reason for that is we have actual content. Now, this content could come from a content management system or some kind of blog somewhere. So we do want to use this actual content. So here, what I'm going to do is remove our current content. And instead, we're just going to add a section tag. Now, this first section tag currently looks like this. So I've got my downtown Los Angeles by Josh Rose. So we need to add two tags within our section. The first one I'm going to add in unsurprisingly is a H1 tag. And again, in here, I'm just going to write in downtown Los Angeles, if I spell that correctly. And after this H1 tag, I'm going to add a H2 tag, a H2 tag in here with Josh Rose. So this at the moment on our page should look like this, downtown Los Angeles and Josh Rose. Now, the reason we haven't got any kind of style to this page, of course, is we haven't changed any of our CSS just yet, but let's add more content. So second section we need to add in here, uh, City of Chicago by Christian Perna. Now you can get the content from here. I have added it in the content file in our downloads. So I'm just gonna open this up, just to make it copy and paste. Here we go with the links to the actual photographer. So we're just going to quickly add in the second section. So we've got one section outside this, we're going to have a second section. And in here, we're going to have a H1. And this is by, well, this is the city of Chicago in here with the H2 of Christian Perna. And the same thing with our third section as well. So in here, what we're going to have is a H1. And I'm just going to scroll down the page a little bit to make it a bit easier to read. And this one is Plymouth Underground. And we're going to have a H2, which is Luke Collinson. So what we should see on our page right now is content that looks like this. So at the moment, this is the whole of the content. That's all we really need. The next thing we want to do is start to style this up a little bit more so it looks a little bit more like this. So how do we go about doing this? So the first thing that we're going to do is actually go into our style sheets. Now our base.css is our kind of reset. It kind of removes all the crap that from the old web has. So let's kind of ignore that for now. So what we want to do is actually in our style.css, our code itself. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the H1. And the reason for that is if we look at the final version, all of the typography looks exactly the same. Now I'm not going to worry about the typography just yet. So we'll worry about the kind of general style of the page just for now. And for now, what we're going to do is make the background color the opposite way around. So I'm going to take this background color and make it black. There we go. And this text color and make it white. And there we go. So what we should see now is the opposite way around. And also my H1 should look a little bit smaller. On our final version as well, we don't have any margin to the page or width to the page. Notice that it's pretty much full width in two different directions. So again, I'm going to get rid of margin and width on this page too. So now what we should see is this in the top corner. Now, of course, we don't want things in the top corner. We kind of want to group these by two different areas. So I've got this area grouped, this area grouped, and this area groups. And I've already got groupings in my HTML. In my HTML, I had two or three different section tags. So I'm gonna group them and style these section tags next. So below this, what I'm gonna add in here is section, and I'm gonna style these ones up. The first one I want to do is I kind of wanna move everything from the edge of the, the page itself. So I'm gonna add some padding. Padding moves content into the section tag. Padding of 40, uh, sorry, 64 pixels all the way around, just kind of because it looks good. So I've got one here, I've got one here. Notice there's a gap of 40, uh, 64, and another gap of 64. Now, how do I make 
each one have different styles and made them look a little bit different. Well, the way we do this in HTML and CSS is we add classes. So basically I wanna add a hook onto different things so I know which ones to style up. So on my first section tag in my index.html, I'm gonna add a class of image one, let's call it. And the second one is gonna be image two, unsurprisingly. And the third one is image number three. So I've got image one, two, and three. Now the reason for doing this is I want to style up different sections in different ways. So just to give you a quick example of how this works, on my second section, I want this to have a white background with black text, the opposite way around. So here what I can say is pick all the section tags, which is all three of them. I just want to pick the second one. Dot, which means look for the class or filter by class, image two. And with curly brackets, what I can do now is just pick this section with the image two class that we've just added and change its background color. I want it to be the other way around. So I want it to be white background and the text color is going to be black. So it should reverse. So if I look at it now, what do we see? Now what we see is this kind of black area, the kind of default with image one, then this gap all around is 64. This, the gap around image two is still 64. It applies to all three sections. And then this last one is the same as image two, uh, image one, sorry. So what we want to do next is actually stretch these sections, make them a little bit bigger. How do we do that? Well, I want to do this on all three sections, the kind of general section tag. I'm going to add in a height of 100 VH. VH is just the viewport height, how much of the box that we can currently see. So now what we see is here, we've got section one. If I scroll down, we've got section two and section three. But what we want to start to add is backgrounds to this. On our final one, we have this kind of style in the background here as well. How do we do this? Well, again, first of all, I need some images. So what I'm going to do is I've got my downloads folder here in my assets. I've got my images and my typography. I'll talk about the typography a little bit later. But for now, I'm just going to add them to my project, all four files. There we go. We've got my font and one, two, three, all of these different images. Now, again, you can find the images. All of them are from Unsplash by the actual name of the photographer as well. So Josh Rhodes did actually make this image. How do we add this image to each section? Well, generally what I want to do is section two, section three, and section one all look a little bit different. So section two is gonna have a certain background. What background? Image two. I've kind of tried to match them up. Again, I actually resized all of these in Figma too, so they're not too big. The original ones are a lot bigger. They're actually like 4,000 pixels wide. We don't need 4,000 pixels in this project to download, so we I've resized them a little bit and made them a little bit more smaller. I exported them as JPEGs as well, just so it's nice and you know minimized and kind of really fast to load. So what we're gonna do is for section number two is we're gonna add a background dash image. This URL is unsurprisingly image2.jpg, and I can close Figma in the background. What we should see now is we have image one, which doesn't have a background, image two that has a very big background, and image three that has no background. So I'm gonna add into image one and image two, well, image three, sorry, the next ones. So I'm gonna do this before. Image one is also gonna have a background image, and unsurprisingly, it's image number one. And I'm gonna just have this in the correct order in the same kind of way. Image three is unsurprisingly background image number three. There we go. So now what we should see is this kind of edge of the image on each one. Now we kind of wanna resize this within the browser itself. We wanna put it in the middle, give it a size, give it this kind of wipe effect too. I wanna do this on all three at the same time they're not really gonna work any differently. So I'm gonna do this in my section tag up here. So where I've got my padding and my height, I also wanna add in the background size, I wanna add in the background position, put it in the middle, and maybe some other things in here as well. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add a background size. The background size I'm gonna use. Now again, don't worry about this too much. This is gonna be 60 V max. So 60% of the maximum of either the width or the height in the X direction and auto. So make it have the right ratio. Now I kind of pick this because it looked pretty good at all different sizes. 
you can see here that currently it tiles but if I kind of resize this you can see it looks pretty good all different sizes so the next thing I'm going to do is move it into the middle of the page so to do that I want the background position in the center in both directions similar to what we did with p5 so now what we should see is this is in the middle but it's still tiles you can see it's kind of ugly but you can kind of see that in the middle of the page so next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to remove this background uh, repeat and say please no repeat so what we should see is just the rest of the background color in the background now so we've got one we've got two and three the last thing I want to do is add this kind of wipe effect in here. It's very easy to add. It seems like it's quite a complex thing, but it's not. What we're going to add in is a background attachment. And similar to fixing things into position, we want the background to be fixed into position too. Background attachment is fixed. So just by adding this very simple kind of code in here, we have this kind of wipe effect in place in a very quick way. The next thing we're going to do is add some web typography. We'll talk about how to add that in next.